It's a weird time, though, for partisan politics, right? And I, I dare say it's a little weirder for Republicans uh, right now. The RNC, uh, just on Friday, censured Cheney and Kinzinger, two oh. very conservative members of Congress, because they're participating in the investigation um, into January 6th. And in fact, they called, they accused Kinzinger and Cheney of participating in the, quote, persecution of ordinary citizens engaged in legitimate political discourse. Now, you tweeted yesterday that that description is just plain wrong. We cannot allow a false narrative to be created. Um, it must be uncomfortable to be a non-rigidly partisan person during this period. During this part period, yes. Um, but it can be yeah. uncomfortable. Um, it, it can be uncomfortable when when you say, I'm, I'm not going to align myself neatly with what the party is saying just because the party is saying, you've got to be comfortable enough in who you are and who you represent and why you're here. I mean, I'm not here to be the representative of the Republican Party. I'm here to be the representative for Alaskan people. And I take that charge very, very seriously. So when there is a conflict, when the, when the party is is, is, is taking an approach or saying things that I think are just absolutely wrong, I think it's my, my responsibility as, as an Alaskan senator speaking out for Alaskans to, to just speak the truth. And I think that that's hard because we seek protection yeah. in, our, in our lanes over to the right and over to the left, and that gives you company. But is that really why people sent you here? Is that really what they want? I don't think people in Alaska want that. I don't think people in West Virginia expect all. that. And so, yeah, it's harder. It is harder. The easier thing to do is just go along to get along. Or just keep your mouth shut. Just keep your mouth shut. Yeah. But you know what? That's not why we're here. We're here to do some hard things. And sometimes the hard things are to say, I want to get something done yeah. rather than just follow the messaging from our respective Parties. Let's I, I try to get something done. I don't think politics was designed to be comfortable, but it sure as heck wasn't designed to be miserable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? And it's almost turned into a miserable situation because yeah. common sense and just civility, collegi collegiality, all the things that you would think that should go with it and you've heard about and the way it used to work, we're working like the Dickens. We have to work harder now to be together, to work on things together, basically to buck our leadership maybe at times. We've been very fortunate, you know, our leadership, Schumer, he understands what we're trying to do. He's been absolutely positive. He says, well, if you can get something do, done, do it. I've gone over and talked to Mitch. Mm -hmm. Mitch has been supportive of things that we're doing now. So basically, they understand, and I think they all want us to work together. And like I say, it should not be miserable, and I'm not going to be in a miserable situation when I have good friends I can work with. Yeah, but now you're under fire. It's not the same thing, obviously, uh, but it's you're under fire for not supporting uh, changing the filibuster rules so as to pass the election reform bills. Bernie Sanders has said he supports a primary challenge to you and to Senator Sinema. Schumer has not said that he is endorsing you. We've talked about that and everything. And I told Chuck and I were talking the other day, and I said, Chuck, basically the best thing to say uh, that I would think in a situation like that, but, you know, they're going to support. I, I don't, no, no way, shape, or form will Mitch McConnell or Chuck Schumer not support their, their caucus. It right. just doesn't happen. Now, with that being said, I'd have said, you know, sometimes uh, you tell me, uh, Jake, I want to be for you. I can be for you or against you. What helps you the most? Yeah. And Chuck, it <laughs> might be funny. in Chuck's situation. Yeah. He'll say, Joe, I can be for you or against you. What would help the most? But with that, you know, you put a little levity to that, but I, I don't put any stock in that. I've had a primary. I've been running since 1982. Yeah. I have never run unopposed. But I'll never. be there for you, Joe. <laughs> You're going to endorse him? endorse me? If he's running, I'm, I'm endorsing him. See, there we go. Is um, just a, a quick a follow up on something I asked in the previous segment. Have you talked to President Biden about Build Back Better in any way forward of a smaller bill? We, we've had a conversation, but we really didn't get into that because right now our main concern is to get a budget. You want a budget bill first? We have to get a budget bill first. The bottom line is the budget bill. We just talked to the military. We had a, we had a security meeting, all right. of us there, and the geopolitical unrest that we have, especially with Ukraine and, and, and uh, Russia and with all of Europe and all of our NATO allies. Uh, and the military was there, and he, they were asked point blank, what, what uh, challenges do you have if we stay with the CR continuing resolution? We're working off of 
basically the last year of uh, the Trump administration's budget. Yeah, one okay. thing I, I want They need help. They, they want a budget. The uh, President Biden right now is, is trying to decide who he's going to nominate to the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, and I'm wondering if how important it is, you think, for him to pick somebody that can definitely get bipartisan support. He doesn't necessarily need it, right? Um, but, there, you know, for instance, there's a candidate, a not possible candidate from South Carolina who Lindsey Graham has said very positive things about. It's an opportunity, I, I would think you would think, for him to put his money where his mouth is in terms of bipartisanship. Exactly immunity. so. It goes back to his words at the prayer breakfast. How are, we going to, how are we going to unify? What is it that we need to do? Well, one of the signals that he can send is putting forth a nominee for the Supreme Court that will, will gain a level of bipartisan support. And when I say a level, I think it has to be more than just one because yeah. as, as, as much as that is, it does not necessarily mean that you have that broader support. Not just Susan Collins or you. Some... Well, seriously, there, yeah. there are many, many exceptionally well-qualified yeah. African-American women who could, who could move forward into this position. So, Mr. President, I'm asking you to, to look through those critically and not, not pick the one that would be to the furthest left, but to pick that that one, that individual, who will enjoy some level of bipartisan support. Do you have someone in mind? I think, I think that that sends a signal to the public that maybe, maybe the courts are not as political as the legislative and the executive branch. You know, because right now, the country is starting oh, to yeah. believe they're losing faith in their courts. They're looking at them as nothing more than an adjunct of, of Very partisan, elected yeah. bodies because of the, the, the partisan nature. So demonstrate, demonstrate some bipartisan support. Everybody that's been mentioned so far, Jake, is extremely qualified. Yeah. Either one of any of these Of candidates. the three major candidates. Yeah, they, they, they could all do a very good job, and they have the, the background and the experience to do it. The thing about I was the governor, so I, I named some judges in my tenure as, as, as governor, and they're very independent. They might philosophically not come exactly where you are on certain issues, but that doesn't really make, make them a less qualified. The bottom line is look for the person that has the, the upbringing and things that basically would make someone a well-rounded Candidate. And you look at the makeup of the Supreme Court, and I think that, you know, uh, the, uh, the Justice Childs from uh, South Carolina, yeah, that grassroots support, basically. That's the one that Lindsey Graham said nice this. things about. Yeah, they're all, and I, I, I will predict that the person that, uh, the president, whoever he chooses, I think will get a majority of, of votes. It'll get 60 or more. You're somebody for whom... Uh, diversity is important. Are you the first woman senator in, the, uh, in Alaskan yeah. history? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that, that uh, you haven't criticized uh, President Biden's idea that he wants to nominate an African-American woman for the position, given the fact that there has never been one even seriously considered. Um, but some of your colleagues have, have really attacked that point. They have attacked it. Um, you know, I think we need to look at this, look at this critically and, and recognize that you have a, a court that, over its history, um, some, I don't know if it's 110, 115 uh, Supreme Court justices. You look at, you look at the pictures. Yeah, um, a lot of white male faces. You said it. <laughs> and so how we, how we make sure that, again, our court is representative of the country. Yeah. And, and so I, I want to make sure that the president nominates an exceptional candidate, an exceptional individual. And I would be honored to be able to support an exceptional African-American woman. I think basically the courts should be, represent the makeup of our, of our country. Yeah. And Big, it's time for this. It's time, absolutely time. Big picture, and this is the last question for both of you. Um, what are the forces that are making bipartisanship Difficult, and how do we how do we change the incentive structure in this country? Let me let me start with you on that. The things that are making it difficult, I think, are are outside groups mm -hmm. that basically say it's an either or proposition. If you can't get as much as we want on voting rights, then we're gonna smack it down. If you can't come to if you can't do it our way with a violence against women reauthorization, 
we're going to key vote it. We're going to we're going to make this an either or proposition. And so what happens is you have you have messages that are wholly partisan that are not able to to get the support that you need. It's okay to recognize that somebody on the other side of the aisle might have a good idea that can be incorporated into what we have done. And it might not be the best idea, but it's a good idea. And if it builds that support, let's allow it. But we, we have this. Sounds these, like common sense, but well, I think first, uh, first of all, Jake. It's what we tell our kids. 